Hi everyone, I'm Maria McGlatlin. Recently I happened on a video by one Riley Grace Roshong entitled Trans Woman Debunks Turf Germaine Greer. Now given that Germaine Greer is a very distinguished scholar with over half a century in academia, and this kid looks about 15 to me, though he must be older because he's at law school, I was intrigued enough to watch it. More for me, hey? This is Riley. So this is also someone who, who I have not covered yet. Apparently she's, she's pretty popular, Germaine Greer. I get the impression Riley doesn't know much about Germaine Greer, or maybe he's just unimpressed that she is one of the most famous feminists in the world. Someone whose first book, The Female Eunuch, was groundbreaking, seminal. Many of us um, became feminists as a result of reading it. Mind you, she's also a contrarian and has said some pretty disagreeable things over the last couple of decades. However, unlike these delightful trans activists, she has never publicly abused anyone. Somewhat bizarrely, the source Riley is using to debunk Germaine Greer isn't one of her books or articles or lectures. Um, but a very lightweight interview she gave back in 2015 to Kirsty Walk of BBC Newsnight. It was a news story at that time that Germaine had been due to deliver a lecture at Cardiff University on a subject that had nothing whatever to do with transgenderism, and some students and trans activists were trying to get the lecture cancelled on the ground that Germaine had previously stated that so-called trans women aren't women even post-operatively, though if I remember rightly, she put it rather more crudely than that. Curiously though, Riley doesn't mention the context of the interview and that doesn't reflect well on him. Oh, by the way, anyone who uses the derogatory and hateful label TERF to refer to anyone who supports women doesn't deserve courtesy and preferred pronouns. If that's going to negatively impact on your mental health or something, then look away permanently. Back to Riley. Let's let her take it away. And apparently people have decided that because I don't think that post-operative transgender men, uh, i.e. N2F, um, transgender people are women. Oh, well, they are. Here, let's just establish this foundation early on. Um, so yeah, let's talk about what makes a gender or what makes someone like a woman, a man, etc. What makes someone a woman is being born female and growing up, but this has never been controversial, though it has now become potentially dangerous to state it publicly. And that isn't something that trans activists should be proud of. You don't win debates by threats, intimidation, or trying to censor people, or by attributing to them views they have not expressed and words they have not said, which is what Riley does repeatedly, as you will see. One popular anti-trans argument is that there's no difference between sex and gender, or gender and sex. I do hope you don't approach your academic essays like this, Riley. Your video promises to debunk Germaine Greer, so why are you even mentioning an argument she doesn't make? An argument that no feminist makes. The notion of gender as socially constructed has been fundamental to feminist theory for over four decades. So I'm going to skip a load of the tedious and repetitive stuff in this video because it's all irrelevant as far as debunking Germaine Greer is concerned. And then we get to this bit of nonsense, which, because Riley is quite hard to follow, I have helpfully set out in text for you to read as well. The broad academic literature defines gender, one, objectively, meaning it's comprised of A, the totality of one's social expressions, B, the average reasonable person's interpretations of those social expressions, and C, the average reasonable person's categorization of one based on those interpretations. What does that mean? This is what I always find when I ask gender ideologues to explain what they mean by gender. They either avoid answering altogether or spout a load of obscurantist drivel. The totality of one's social expressions. Presumably this refers to how you express yourself in terms of your appearance and behavior. But compared to what exactly? And what exactly is it that you do, Riley? Tell us all of the ways you express yourself socially that makes you think you're entitled to call yourself a woman, because it's the totality of one's social expressions that counts, apparently. 
It's up to you to supply the information in order to persuade those of us who won't be browbeaten into just accepting an unsupported claim that someone born male is a woman. Explain why we have to accept a redefinition of the word woman to include people born male. As for the rest of it, about how average reasonable persons interpret and categorize you on the basis of your social expressions. That is beyond ridiculous. What are the criteria for determining um, what makes a person average and reasonable? How is it measured? Are all average and reasonable people expected to react the same way, regardless of their demographic? It gets worse. The broad academic literature also defines gender and two, subjectively, meaning it's comprised of the totality of one's involuntary thought processes, which lead one to make those expressions, right? If you have certain ways of thinking about yourself that lead you unquestionably to believe that you are a gender different from what you are assigned at birth, and then you start expressing yourself in line with those mental processes, and then society re uh, reciprocates those expressions, interprets them to assign you into the category that you believe yourself to be, then congratulations, that's what it means to be a gender. So yeah, um, trans women are women, and that is a wrong opinion. Translation. If you find yourself fantasizing that you're the other sex to the extent that you start believing you are somehow a woman even though you are male, or vice versa, and if this leads you to start presenting as your idea of the other sex and other people pretend to accept you as such, then congratulations, you're deluded. Womanhood isn't a costume or a collection of expressions, thoughts and feelings. It isn't what other people see you as. It is the state of being an adult female, regardless of how we look and behave, regardless of what we think and feel. Let's carry on. Kirsty Walk is talking about medical transition. Him, her, feel more comfortable in her body. Then that's what should be done. That's, they should be allowed to do that. I'm not saying that people should not be allowed to go through that procedure. What I'm saying is it doesn't make them a woman. It happens to be an opinion. I mean, that in and of itself doesn't make someone a woman. I mean, you can not go through the surgery and you can be a woman, right? We talked about why it's not really disputed. And you haven't really offered an argument why that's the case. No, we haven't talked about it, Riley. What you have done is mumble some gender theory bollocks at us that a woman is basically anyone who claims to feel like one. And believe me, it is very much disputed by plenty of average reasonable people in virtually every demographic. Well, maybe not sociology students. Try reading some feminist academics. Hmm, I wonder if Riley knows of any feminist academic he could start with. Like right now, she just said, it's my opinion that someone who goes through that surgery isn't a woman. And it's like, cool, you're allowed to have that opinion, but um, facts don't care about your feelings, hun. What facts would those be, hun? Facts like you fantasizing being a woman and putting on a dress makes you a woman? No, Germaine Greer is right. To be a woman, you must be female. That is a fact. It's not uh, a prohibition. Carry on. If, if that's what you think it is you want to do. I've been accused of inciting violence against transsexual people. That's absolute nonsense. I, I, have, I haven't actually incited violence against trans people. I just routinely pr uh, push the idea that they aren't who they say they are. No, she doesn't routinely say trans people aren't who they say they are. I'm sure that if you told her you were Riley Grace Rochon, she wouldn't deny that because that's who you are. Let me try to make this clear. If I were to walk into a school building and somebody asks me who I am, I wouldn't say I'm a woman because that would be nuts. I would give them my name and my connection, if any, to the school. That is the information that defines who I am in that particular situation. Germaine Greer's opinion, which is not one that she routinely expresses because she doesn't have to, it is shared by most people, is that men can't be women no matter what they do to themselves. And that, that there's something inherently wrong with them if they choose to believe that, they're, that they are who they say that they are. Choose to believe. If you choose to believe you are something you are not, then you are lying to yourself. If you can't help but believe it, then you're wrong. Your belief is not grounded in reality, but on what you wish were the case. I mean, hold on. Is anyone familiar with the idea of stochastic terrorism? 
Uh, yes, but... Is that something that we have to talk about here? Uh, no, because that has nothing to do with Germain Grion. It would be extreme gaslighting if you suggested it does. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about the idea of stochastic terrorism. Oh, God, no. Right. I'm going to stop it here. If you want to hear Riley prattling on about stochastic terrorism, by all means, go and listen to the original video. There's a link below. In the meantime, for those not familiar with the term, I'll just read the dictionary definition, which is the public demonization of a person or group resulting in the incitement of a violent act, which is statistically probable, but whose specifics cannot be predicted. There is probably no better example of stochastic terrorism at the present time than the constant demonization of gender critical feminists by trans activists like Riley. And it is certainly what caused a particular trans activist to initiate violence against a particular feminist who ended up getting punched and kicked to the ground, doing the trans rights movement in the UK a lot of harm. Ever seen a trans person get punched and kicked to the ground by gender critical feminists? Riley, of course, sees it the other way around. Although they may not specifically call for the harm to be committed against the groups that they discuss, by normalizing negative views about the targeted groups, they increase the likelihood that their fans will adopt those views and will subsequently commit specific acts of harm against members of those groups. Translation. Although high-profile feminists like Germaine Greer don't call for harm against trans people, although they never say punch, burn, kill or rape trans people like so many trans-identifying men do about us, by refusing to go along with an ideology that reduces women to a collection of stereotypes, that is what Riley calls normalizing negative views about trans people. So the conclusion is that yes, content creators or public figures like Jermaine Greer are responsible for their ban for their fan bases harming specific people even if they only talk about the targeted demographics in a general sense. Well, that's a very convenient conclusion for you to come to, but where is the evidence that any of Jermaine Greer's fan base, assuming she even has one, if she does it will comprise mostly of old women, I should think, where is the evidence of any trans person being uh, harmed by anyone influenced by Germaine Greer or by any other radical feminist. If you're going around saying that like that they, they aren't women, that they're that they're men, um, that they aren't who they say they are, you are spreading the idea that these people are lying, that we are lying, that I am lying by saying that I am a woman. Yes, you are either lying or you're deluded. In either case, you are identifying into a class of people that has been exploited and mistreated throughout history by the class of people you were born into. And you are demanding that you be validated and accommodated by us while disdaining and sneering at us as TERFs. You are doing what entitled men have always done and deciding what it means to be a woman. And that is patently not only false, but increasing the likelihood that other people in society will take harm against me. Oh, don't be so silly. Resisting men trying to adjudicate on what we are in order to make themselves feel better does not result in harm to them. Again, if you're going to make this claim, the onus is on you to provide evidence. Where is it? because I've got a website full of evidence of women and children being harmed by transgender ideology. Why don't you care about that? She certainly made her opinion clear, but she's provided no evidence as to why that would define what it means to be a woman. She doesn't need to provide evidence for why that is what it means to be a woman, because like most of the rest of the world, she goes by the primary definition. It is people like you who are trying to change it. What she has done is write books on what it means to exist as a woman in the world and to be exploited and oppressed for being a woman. That is not something you will ever have experienced. But just because they don't say so doesn't mean that that person can't feel like that and feels more comfortable with themselves. Yeah, but so what? I, that's not my issue. I don't even talk about it. Not everybody does feel comfortable, by the way, post-operatively. God, this is why this is why I hate going over these. They're, they'd say something pat, like patently wrong every other second.
But she didn't say anything patently wrong, Riley. She said, not everybody does feel comfortable post-operatively. That is patently true. Stories from people who regret transition are all over the place, including right here on YouTube. The um, Detransitioner subreddit now has over 17,000 members. Here is a book full of detransition stories. And here is a page on my site linking to many more. If you hate going over these, don't bother making videos that are full of patently false claims because they are worthless for all purposes, except stirring up hate against feminists, which is, I believe, why you do it. Let's move on. Then do you understand how they might feel that you have been hurtful towards them? People are hurtful to me all the time. I can't be hurtful to other people because people are hurtful to me. If people, if other people do something bad to me, then that completely excuses my ability to be able to do a bad thing to other people. That's literally the argument. That is literally the sound of her point going over your head, Riley. Could you maybe try shrugging off your sense of victimhood long enough to see that she's simply saying that being hurt is part of life? You don't not tell the truth as you see it about something as important as this because some people's feelings are hurt by it. Now, enlighten us. What is this bad thing she's done to other people? The fact that like people mistreat you is not a justification to go out and treat mistreat other people. Again, she went out and mistreated other people. Oh my God. So what exactly did she do? That is a pretty serious allegation, Riley. So please tell us what this old woman did uh, to justify an accusation of mistreating other people. And bearing in mind what people who agree with you say about her, it better be good or bad. I mean, really bad. A turf feelings are hurt. Oh no. Did he really say that? A turf feelings are hurt. Oh no. Yes, he did. Can there be a better illustration of how the label TERF is used to dehumanize us? Because she's a TERF. Who cares if she doesn't like the fact that people tell vicious lies about her? Let's just mock her. And yet later on in the video, um, Kirsty Walk mentions Caitlyn Jenner's name and Germaine sniggers and says, must you? And Riley totally goes off on one. He goes on for over half a minute about how Germaine is laughing at a trans person. Never mind who it is, never mind how awful Caitlyn Jenner is as an individual, the fact that he is trans means that you must not show frustration at the mention of his name, which is all Germaine does, actually. But it's okay to mock a feminist icon. You absolute hypocrite, Riley Grace Rochong. Try being an old woman. <laughs> For goodness sake. People get hurt all the time. I'm not about to walk on eggshells. People get hurt all the time, so I'm going to hurt others. That's literally the argument. I want to be a bigot so bad, life is not fair. <laughs> You realize by now, of course, that Riley is another one of those who thinks that anyone who stands up for women and refuses to submit to them is a bigot. Making a video in order to talk over, misrepresent and generally be nasty about a woman who refuses to go along with a lie isn't bigoted at all, right? The bit about being an old woman and the ageism, as well as the sexism, was another whoosh moment for Riley, who, let's be honest, comes from the most privileged demographic, that of the young, white, middle-class, heterosexual, or bisexual, maybe, American male. Now, brace yourself. Happy outcome for them, and they may feel that you are, in a way, uh, denigrating them for taking that road. Yep. Oh, don't even talk about them. They're not my issue. I, don't, I haven't published anything about transgender for years. Jermaine Greer, transgender women are not women. It's not your issue. Why the fuck is this up then? Why the fuck did you do this interview? Oh, stop shouting, you hideous little brat. The video was put up by the BBC, not her. They went to her home 50 miles out in the countryside to interview her because... 
as you would know if you'd done a modicum of research. And as I said at the beginning, um, it was a new story at the time because a large number of small-minded, tyrannical thugs were trying to get her no platformed. And like, let's be clear, what this person is standing for right now is anti-intellectualism. She's not expressing a, a, a perfectly viable alternative opinion. Like, she's just wrong. <laughs> The reason I show him saying that is because, incredible though it may seem, people do actually believe this guy. You should see the comments underneath the video. And what this illustrates is, as I'm sure most viewers of this video probably already know, when someone is deeply emotionally invested in a position, they will accept whatever anybody says that affirms what they already want to be true regardless of the evidence, and they will completely ignore any arguments to the contrary. Germaine Greer is being called anti-intellectual for saying men aren't women. Can it get any dumber than this? Well, yes. A bit later on, Kirsty Walk asks Germaine something about um, Caitlyn Jenner getting that award Woman of the Year by Glamour magazine, which had just happened at the time of this interview in 2015. And Germaine responds thus. I think it's misogynist. I, I think misogyny plays a really big part in all of this, um, that a man who goes to these lengths will be a better woman than someone who was just born a woman. I mean, that's a fair point, isn't it? In a year that Caitlyn Jenner did absolutely nothing for women, apart from kill one through reckless driving, this Olympic gold medal winning decathlete who's had three marriages to women and fathered six children gets awarded a Woman of the Year trophy for what exactly? No wonder the widower of Maura Smith, who was a police officer in New York and who got the same award posthumously um, for her heroism during the 9-11 terrorist attack and who ultimately lost her life saving people. No wonder her poor widower sent the award back in disgust. Hold on. This is actually a really important turf talking point because like there's no winning with turfs, right? So the reason why Caitlyn Jenner, and some people might consider her to be like a little cringy, is because she is one of those kind of, like, she's a trans person who, like, very much overperforms femininity to try and, like, convey themselves as a woman, right? And so, like, Jermaine Greer and other TERFs will be like, aha, that's evidence that actually you're just, like, caricaturing femininity and you're not actually conveying what it means to be a woman. Well, again, that is not what Jermaine said. The point is that Jenna is not a woman. Whether he performs femininity well or badly is irrelevant to the fact that promoting him as a woman just because he says he is one, overlooking real women for a women's award is an illustration of how unimportant women are considered to be compared to men. Why does Riley not engage with this point about misogyny? The answer, I believe, is that he simply doesn't get it. Instead, he goes on about it being a no-win situation for the poor men who are either criticised for caricaturing femininity, which they do, or mocked for looking like the blokes they are. His empathy is entirely with the men, and this is someone who claims to be a woman. Riley, it is a no-win situation for you. You cannot be a woman because women are female and you don't have the right to redefine us and erase us as a sex class to fit your feelings. Now we're only just over halfway through Riley's video and I'm already losing the will to live so um, he does just continue in the same manner. He misunderstands what Germaine says, he puts words into her mouth and generally comes across as a right nasty piece of work, though a hero to his cult, no doubt. I'm just going to pick him up on one more thing. At the very end of the interview, Kirsty Walk asked Germaine Greer if she will go to Cardiff to deliver her lecture if her safety can be guaranteed. And again, um, she replies and gets jumped on by Riley. Watch. I'm getting a bit old for all this. I'm 76. I don't want to go down there and be screamed at and have things thrown at me. Bugger it. It's not that interesting. I don't want to go and actually have my, uh, my, my uh, personal opinions, my unsubstantiated personal opinions challenged by facts and logic. 
Again, Riley Grace Rochon, you are so wrong. This woman has spent all her adult life being challenged, as you would know if you bothered to find out anything about her. She has never shied away from challenges. She is shying away from the prospect of being screamed and shouted at and having things thrown at her again by the bigot and the bullies of your tribe who were trying to get her deplatformed. They weren't interested in going to her lecture and challenging her. They were trying to stop it happening. Nobody wants to be treated like that, but this hasn't penetrated because you have no empathy or respect for women. Be very ashamed. Ultimately, I am pleased to report that Germaine Greer did travel to Cardiff and delivered her lecture, which was entitled Women and Power, the Lessons of the 20th Century. I do hope that those trying to get this lecture stopped didn't have the temerity to call themselves feminists or allies, but alas, I expect they did, thereby betraying the generations of women that fought against male entitlement for women's rights. I'll link to this report from The Guardian below. Thanks for watching. Bye.